Today on Flywire, I want to uh, show you what I found in a portable building on a small airfield in England. It's truly amazing. Stick with me on Flywire. Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, I want to show you an amazing airplane project that I found at Derby, England. And it's a, it's a DH-88 DH Comet. The first one made for the 1934 England to Australia McRobertson Air Race, sponsored by McPherson Robertson, I think I got that right. He was an Australian candy maker, celebrating the uh, anniversary. So he put a 15,000 pound prize to the winner, and that's about $400,000 in today's money. De Havilland in England decided to pursue manufacturing the race planes at a loss to compete against large American types because no other airplane could do it. So they said, well, we're going to do it. And frankly, I find and have always found that the construction and design of the Comet to be fascinating. It's mostly wood, a stressed skin design. The leading edge and trailing edge uh, have uh, ribs to serve as formers for the wing, uh, but there are no uh, internal ribs. The wing box is the structure and the skin transfers the load. It's made entirely of wood, as I said, and it's constructed in one piece, the wing. It's amazing, tip to tip. The front and rear spars are attached by uh, laminating uh, layers of wood planks in, opposing, in an opposing crosshatch pattern, so you have uh, opposing grain. And it's nailed and glued together, making it an exceedingly strong and relatively light structure. Modern con composite construction using fiberglass or carbon fiber uses uh, the same kind of technique. They don't use the nails. Uh, the engines are hung on the structure using metal mounts for two underslung Gypsy, Gypsy 6R engines producing about 220 horsepower. It's a race-tuned engine. The propellers are variable pitch props. The monoplane, uh, meaning single wing, versus the predominant biplane design of the time use manual split flaps and retractable landing gear. This is all new stuff. It had been invented, they didn't invent it, but they all put it in one airplane, it's all new. First time that was done. The net result was a very fast airplane with a 220 mile per hour cruise at about 19,000 feet and a 2,900 mile range. That's amazing. It could operate, operate off short, soft fields. <clears throat> and it, one of the cool things I think are freeze ailerons. The cool thing about this design incorporates a slot to allow the air to flow from the bottom to the top of the wing, so high pressure to low pressure, uh, and the leading edge of the aileron. The aileron is hinged about 30% of the cord line near the bottom, and this has the effect of putting a portion of the leading edge to protrude into the airflow uh, on the downgoing wing. Some of the high pressure air under the wing then is directed to the top of the aileron through that slot. And this adds a little lift and tighten and lightens the stick forces, requiring less aileron travel and lighter stick force. Um, so a little bit finer control. The protruding land leading edge also creates a little drag, which counters adverse yaw to some degree. Some argument can be made about that. Another fascinating design feature for me is the fuel tank in the nose, putting about 236, 38 uh, imperial gallons, 285 US gallons near the CG and another 20 gallon uh, tank is just behind the rear seat. This, uh, the tandem pilot seats and the forward underslung engines counteract each other CG wise and keeps the fuel all pretty much near the CG. After all, it was a long distance racer and the stop you don't have to make is time in the bank. All in all, there were many improved technolo technology features incorporated in the Comet. It was definitely an industry leader of the time. Uh, pretty cool, looks pretty sleek. A little interesting with that huge nose uh, fuel tank. The investment de Havilland made in design and production of the Comet was realized in spectacular fashion with the uh, DH-98, the Mosquito of World War II. It used the same stressed skin design and was nearly all wood. Uh, over 6,700 of those were delivered during the war and it was the very, very fast airplane filling bomber, reconnaissance, uh, night fighter roles, uh, it was a pathfinder, and a very good friend of mine, Ed Bolter, was a Mosquito Pathfinder pilot during the war, and he ended up uh, having to jump out of five uh, Mosquitoes in the stress of combat. Truly an amazing story. He's got a book that's not in wide circulation. And Christine Bolter, great people. There were three Comets made for the race, with two additional airplanes constructed afterwards. The first one, Black Magic, 
to be flown by Jim Mollison and his wife, Amy Johnson, both of whom were famous aviators of the day. They specialized in setting speed and distance records. So this was right up their alley. They bought the first one for 5,000 pounds, as I remember. The second Comet was owned by Arthur Edwards, who was the managing director of Grosvenor House Hotel in London, painted it red and hired C.W. Scott and Tom Campbell Black to fly it. The airplane was restored by the Shuttleworth Collection and is still regularly flown at Old Warden. Seen it there fly, it's a truly amazing airplane. I think it's in actually in the video I did about uh, the Shuttleworth Collection. The airplane won the race by over nine hours, posting a record time of just under 71 hours from Milton Hall, England to start to Melbourne, Australia to finish. The third was painted in British Racing Green by Bernard Rubin, an automobile racer. It was flown by Cathcart and Waller, and it finished fourth. In the race, Mollison and Johnson got off first, and then they flew nonstop to Baghdad. They refueled and then on to Karachi, India. They set a record of just over 22 hours to India. With a massive lead, they took off for the next stop, things, which was Allahabad. Uh, with a faulty compass, they veered off course and landed in Jabalapur, India, and there was no aviation fuel for those race-tuned engines, so they used local car gas, and in flight, a piston seized and the engine began leaking oil. Needing a replacement engine, they retired at Allahabad and unfortunately blew the, blew the lead. Really unfortunate. The Mollinson sold the airplane after the race and it was eventually registered in Spain. With the, uh, in the late 70s then, it was found in a barn, truly a barn find in Portugal, and made its way back to England to Darby Airfield. And uh, that's where I found it. The, pro the project to rebuild Black Magic has been going on for quite some time. Um, basically since the 90s, uh, but unfortunately is not well known. They have a dedicated group of volunteers uh, who are doing a really uh, tremendous job working away on the project in that barn at Darby Airfield. I expect it, it's going to fly in the next couple of years, and I can't wait to see it. I think it's going to be incredible. I hope I can be there. It really is truly amazing what you can find in an innocuous building in England. Darby is just a small airfield with a grass runway somewhere in the middle of England, uh, spelled D-E-R-B-Y, by the way. Uh, but they're restoring a priceless DH-88 Comet, and it is definitely not what I expected. I was really surprised when we went over there and saw that airplane. Uh, that reminds me that most of the World War II Mosquito was made by various furniture companies scattered around England and then assembled and sent to the factory and then assembled in what was nearly the fastest Allied airplane of World War II, commonly posting straight line speeds of over 420 miles an hour, truly uh, at that altitude, uh, high altitude, truly amazing. Thanks for dropping into the barn with me. Uh, I'm going to leave a link below to the uh, Darby Group restoration webpage and their Facebook page. They can use your support and every penny or pence counts. Uh, I think I'll probably throw in some money too, and maybe they'll let me come see the, the first flight. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time on Flywire. So he named it Grosvenor Gros, 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 Whatever. He